Golden Tigers fans, get ready. It's time for Buckets, Blocks, Spills, Thrills, Steals, and Slams. Thunder! Tuskegee Basketball is next on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Now, let's go courtside with the call. Here's Charles Ward. Everybody at courtside here in Daniel Chappie James Center getting set for Golden Tigers basketball. Glad you could join us for the coverage. Charles Ward joined as usual by Dwayne Walker. And Walk, Happy New Year to you. Well, Happy New Year to you, but don't sound so thrilled, Ward. <laughs> well, we have to do this, right? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Well, the one thing we are pleased about is having to do this broadcast tonight. The Tigers of Tuskegee getting set for a four-game homestand. And I know you had a chance to talk to Coach Wester about this in terms of this is the second half of the season. Well, listen, Charles, this is going to be the meat and potatoes of the season. Uh, Coach Deontay Wester, the Tigers coming, the Golden Tigers come with a record of 6-3 and three overall, but more importantly, 3-2 and two at conference. But wins are going to be vital coming up as we begin the meat of the SIAC schedule. They finished up with Edward Waters in December, headed now into the new year, a 64-62 win in that ball game. A lot of momentum coming into that ball game because they had to go to a lot of different personnel to pull that one off. Not only that, it's on the road, but she got performances from Ariel McElroy as well as Brittany Bowling. They're the two main scorers for this Golden Tigers team, and they'll need big contributions coming up the second half of the season, including tonight. I know you're talking about that, and you're making a reference right now, but how big is it going to be for them to really step up into this second half? Well, it's crucial because the Golden Tigers are going to be the target of every SIAC team. Why? Because they're the defending SIAC champions. Now, even though it's Coach Wester's first year, she's got a big act to follow. They get set to meet the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. A couple of key players for them. We'll see how this ball game unfolds as we start the four-game homestand for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Basketball is just ahead here on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Shiante Wester, head women's basketball coach, and this is the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Hi, I'm Drayton Florence, 2023 SIAC Hall of Fame inductee. Thank you for watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. And welcome everybody inside of the pregame show getting set for Golden Tigers basketball as they get set to host the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. Women's action just ahead. That means we're joined in the pregame show by head coach Deontay Wester. Coach, thanks for joining us before the ball game tonight. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You come into this ball game after a 17-day layoff. Winners against the Tigers of Edward Waters in your last ball game. 64-62 win in that contest on the road. Talk a little bit about that ball game. Um, they were, Ever Waters, they were a tough little team to play. Um, they scrappy, just like this team tonight. Um, they never quit, and it, it was going down to the wire. Uh, the, the one who executed their plays in the end pretty much was the ones who got the victory. That was us. So <laughs> I know you're happy about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you had to go through a lot of personnel in that ball game, but really rising in that contest was Brittany Bolin and McElroy really standing out in that contest to lead you down the stretch. Yes, those two seniors, um, they was, uh, you know, pre, pre conference or pre season, all of me, I mean, all conference players picked. So they um, just took it, took the team on their shoulders and, and kind of help us waver the storm um, with them. So. But we talked about it 17 days ago. That's quite a while since your last play. What did you try to do in that seven day stretch to get us prepared for tonight? And was there an opportunity there for the team to kind of let his hair down a little bit? Yes, we started off with uh, first day back. We said no balls, just straight conditioning. So first day back, conditioning. We went to two a days, and the, um, 
then we kind of relaxed and was able to get out to the movies and watch color purple which is a good show so <laughs> it's a great show so we enjoyed that and then we got back at it and started preparing for this game that 17 day layoff at that stage in the season seemingly it's something you probably need at that juncture because you have some nicks and bruises even in the early half of the season as you get set for the second half now yeah so we kind of needed that because coming from uh savannah going down to jacksonville the weather was kind of bad so we had a couple of players that was sick with the cold flu and everything so just being able to rest and, and get our health back to 100 it was pretty good we needed it so um just the nagging injuries, we were able to let them heal up a little bit, but still, uh, we were able to comp compete in practice. So, talk about the 17 day rest, and now we're getting set now for a four game homestand to start the second half of the season. How important is this four game stretch for the Golden Tigers? It, it's, it's important because we need to take care of home, we always got to take care of home court, and this, this was definitely help us going into a four day on the road street so no, right. we want to take care of these four games at home and just stay consistent and get the win with all of them well you start this four game home stretch against the yellow jackets of allen university i know you referenced them a few minutes ago similar to edward waters a very scrappy team yes they 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 scrappy they a little um streaky team they got some shooters that will knock it down sometimes they like to drive and everything so we just got to match their energy or go beyond their energy and play some defense and keep them out of the paint, force them to um, take bad shots. Now we referenced this in one of our pregame shows early in the season, and you brought the hardware with you tonight. So yes. let's introduce this and talk a little bit about it here. That is the impact belt for the Golden Tigers basketball team. Talk a little bit about its significance, Coach. So it's, it's basically we, we try to reward everybody that works hard and let them know, you know, that they take the team on and do it, they, the little things. They're not always about, like I said, about the points. Um, it's about who playing defense and who get who getting that rebound, that one possession that we need. So made an impact in the game. So after the game, we pretty much give this belt to that player and we reward him to take pictures and everything. So. Well, we're looking forward to who will get the impact belt after this contest. Maybe a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Nate Bobbitt, uh, she got it the last game. And Samaya and Tane, uh got it the game before, kind of like um, split it the last two wins. So we'll see. That's what's at stake here this afternoon the impact belt and a win for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Just ahead here from Chappie James. Coach Wester, best of luck in the ballgame tonight. Thank you. Head coach Yate Wester, as they get set to meet the Yellow Jackets of Allen University, basketball coverage just ahead here on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Hello Tuskegee fans, I'm Anthony Howland, Commissioner of the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, and this is the Golden Tiger Sports Network. We are live inside Chappie James getting set for basketball action on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Golden Tigers of Tuskegee getting set to meet the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. Doubleheader action, men, women first, men to follow. Glad you could join us for the coverage. Charles Ward, Dwayne Walker with the play call. Players being introduced here inside Chappie James. Starting lineup for the Yellow Jackets of Allen University who are four and five overall and one and three in SIAC play. Nari Ko, the junior, will go at one of the guard positions for Coach Latoya Jones. Also out on the floor, Cash Hankers. I'm going to have some fun with that name tonight. See how much she cashes in for the Yellow Jackets in this contest. A senior from Glenville, Georgia. Also out on the floor for Coach Jones. It'll be Talia Wesley, the junior from Blakely, Georgia. West Wesley and Jones will be joined by Juju Harrington on the floor. And the five, the fifth player will be 
Zion Duncan, four of the Allen University Yellow Jackets. Again, Latoya Jones, first year head coach. They are four and five overall and one and three in the SIAC. For the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee, starting lineup for Coach Giante Wester and Tuskegee. They'll shape it up this way. Slightly different look in the lineup tonight. Walker for them. It'll be Ariel McElroy, the senior, going. Had a good ball game in the contest against Everett Waters with 13 points and three rebounds. Sine Bobbitt, the junior from Colleen, Texas, gets to start this evening for Coach Wester and Tuskegee, the junior. Four points, five points, five rebounds in that last contest. She'll replace Abdul Rahim in the starting lineup, but expect to see Samaya out on the floor for a good bit of this contest. Aliyah Austin, the junior from Satsuma, Alabama, out on the floor. Brittany Bolin, the junior from Trophy Club, Texas, out. She had 15 points, eight rebounds in their last win. And Jasmine Manuel, the junior from St. Louis, will occupy the center position for Tuskegee as we get set for basketball action. And correction, as we look out on the floor, looks like it's going to be Michaela Malik the senior from Houston, Texas, instead of Manuel on the floor for Coach Wester. Siante Wester in her first year. She's assisted by Montel Jones. And we are set to begin action here in Chappie James. Tuskegee, the home team in the white, trimmed in the crimson. Numerals and lettering on jerseys and trunks in crimson. Tap is up and we're underway. Ronald Davis, Stanley Warmly, and Andrea Butler with the play call. And quickly we go back the other way with Tuskegee's first turnover of the ball game, sending it over to the Yellow Jackets. All right, Charles, we can't have turnovers to begin this game. Golden Tigers come in averaging 16.2 turnovers per contest. So they need to clean that up ASAP. Tenth in the conference in terms of turnovers. And Charles, a couple of firsts to speak of here for tonight. Tonight, Bobbitt getting her first start of the season. While you mentioned Samaya Abdurrahim not in the starting lineup tonight, she had a consecutive streak of nine straight starts to begin the season, but unfortunately, she's under the weather. Yeah, and a little bit of sinus problems we understood from Coach Wester. We certainly will see her in the ballgame. Here's Cole in a half-court set for the Yellow Jackets. Streaks left side, but missed on the lay-in. And the basketball going back over to Tuskegee. So each team with a trip on their half of the floor and we go back the other way now. Brittany Bolin handling for the Golden Tigers. Bolin, the junior, to McElroy, the senior. Top of the key, there's a pass that's almost thrown away, trying to get it to Bobbitt, and now it is thrown away. And you, Allen comes back with the basketball. Just underway, first period of action. No score here at Chappie James. Hard push by Hankerson at the block, and she got a lay in right side. Cash so, Hankerson is the leading scorer for this Allen Yellow Jackets squad. Yellow Jackets taking advantage of the second turnover by the Golden Tigers early in this one. Hankerson at 12.7 points per outing for 13.7 for the Yellow Jackets per outing. Missed opportunity for the Golden Tigers on their end of the floor. We come back to the Yellow Jackets. See, you crunched the math there, Ward. Oh, boy. <laughs> I got a new math set for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Half court set for the Yellow Jackets now. They lead it 2 nothing. 8.35 remains. First period whistles on the penetration on the inside going against Allen University. So we finally see a turnover for Allen. Now get this, Charles. Allen is averaging 22.4 giveaways a game. That's wow. incredible. That's got to lead the league in turnovers. No question about it. I think they are right now seventh overall in turnover margin, but that does not account for the amount of turnovers they had in total. Bobbitt pushes from outside. The spinner is off the mark by her. Her first offering from the floor misses, and we go back the other way. Allen with the basketball. 8.05 remains first period. Allen University with 2 nothing lead over the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Tuskegee after the win over Edward Waters. Trying to continue that momentum into 2024. Hankerson on the move right side. Had it stripped on the inside off of her last. Good defensive effort by the Golden Tigers on the inside. Ariel Malcolm did a nice job of helping on that play. She may have jammed her finger, Charles. She's, she's shaking her right hand vibrantly right now along the right side. She'll handle it in the corner. Pushes back to Bolin for three. Brittany knocks it down from outside. So Bolden's first field goal is a three-pointer, and Tuskegee with his first lead of the ball game. 
Charles' eighth made three-point basket for Brittany this season. 7.23 left first period. Half court set and whistles down low. With two minutes and 45 seconds gone in this first quarter play, only five points thus far. As we see the Yellow Jackets get it down inside. There's a miss. Cleared out of there by Aaliyah Austin. Counter attack now by the Golden Tigers. And the basketball is loose, out of bounds now. But the Golden Tigers will retain the possession. 6.58 remains first period. Bowling to inbound it left of the cylinder. And they will reset it again. Pushing it back out front with the basketball is Bobbitt. Now McElroy had it tapped out front by Hankerson. A little whistle on that play. They'll call it on Hankerson. She'll pick up the foul. It will remain with Tuskegee. Hankerson with her first personal. Bobbitt on the inside, reverse lay in by Sine is off the mark. They try to dump it down inside and taken away by McElroy. Ariel back the other way for Tuskegee now. Up top, Bolden. Brittany with a second three point effort. This one on the front of the iron, though. Basketball back over to Allen University. Tuskegee with a 3 2 lead. Mari Coe, the junior, out front for Allen University. Westerly works it right side, pushes back to Coe. Coe inside the paint, to the glass, left side, and she got a lay-in. She just kept penetrating through that paint and got to the left side of the cylinder for the lay-in, her first two of the ball game. 4-2 lead now for the Yellow Jackets. Half-court set for Tuskegee. Malik for three. Back of the iron on her shot from outside. Cole clears. And slides all the way through left side. Good this time. Good defensive work at the block by Jasmine Manuel, who's out on the floor for that block. And it will stay with the Yellow Jackets. Samaya so Abdur Rahim set to come in now for Tuskegee. As... Michaela Malik takes a seat. 5.38 left, first period of play. Tuskegee trailing 3-4. And the Yellow Jackets with the basketball and the lead on their half of the floor. Westerly out front with a three-point shot. That one's off the mark. Hankerson gave chase but stepped on the inbound line. And we go back the other way with Tuskegee trailing. Charles, the Golden Tigers need a basket on this possession. Now, it's not uncommon for the Golden Tigers to start out kind of slow. It's their, they score their second fewest amount of points in the first quarter, only 119 points all season through nine games. Trinity Layton, the freshman out on the floor. They dump it across the floor now. Brittany Bolin got another chance from outside and knocked down her second triple of this first half of play. And she accounts for all six of the Golden Tigers points thus far, Charles. Two of three from behind the arc for her thus far with 4.58 remaining in the first period. Wesley works it right side for Allen. Down at the block, Hankerson. Tried the reverse lay in there, missed on the shot as Leighton comes clear with it for Tuskegee. Bolin pushes across the timeline, works it right side. 4.38 left first period. McElroy pushes the three and trains it for the Golden Tigers. 
She wasted no time in hoisting that basketball up towards the basket, Charles. She shot that ball with confidence, stepping into the three-point attempt. Leads the team from behind the arc, 35%, 14 of 40. In, the, in her play from behind the arc, right now ninth in the conference and made three-pointers. Aaron shot down low by the Yellow Jackets, and here comes Tuskegee. We approach four minutes remaining first half of play. McElroy pushing back to the top now. Over to Boland, she's free, cocks a three, drains a three. Charles, she is feeling it. She hits the trifecta, third three-point basket for her in the first quarter of play. 3.58 remains in this first period. Tuskegee with a 12-4 lead after that three-pointer. We'll take a break. More basketball action here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. I'm Reginald Ruffin, your director of athletics, and you are watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Back live inside Daniel Chappie James Arena on the campus of Tuskegee University after the timeout. Players getting set to make it back out on the floor. They do so with Tuskegee stretching its lead walk to 12-4. Well, right now I'm impressed by how the Golden Tigers offense turned it around. They scored only four points, Charles, the first four and a half minutes of the game, but then they exploded for eight straight points in the last two minutes. Correction make, that, lead. correction, make that nine points with three three-point baskets. Two by Brittany Boland and another by Ariel McElroy. The people we talked about in the pregame coming to life here so far in this first period. Out front with a jumper. Nicely done there from behind the arc. That's, uh, is that Ava Tillman that just checked in the game? Trying to check that number. Whistles on that penetration. Might have been Tatiana, Tatiana Morris. Morris. Yeah. Say Tatiana. Morris to credit it with that basket for the Yellow Jackets on their end of the floor. Tatiana, the senior from Savannah, with her first two of the ball game. Three-point shot by Morris. You're right. So she'll get three on that field goal. Make it 12-7. And the Yellow Jackets come away with the basketball after a turnover on the Golden Tigers into the floor. Four turnovers, Charles, in the first quarter of play. 3.21 to play. Morris with it out front again. Maya Abdur-Rahim with the defensive assignment. Now they work it down in the corner to Barnwell, the sophomore from Buford, South Carolina. She's out on the floor. And now they give it over. As Maya Johnson was inside and lost the basketball, Abdul Rahim runs it down on the other end of the floor for an easy lay-in. Excellent job by Brittany Bolin. Not enough, Maya Johnson, who thought she was going to go one and one, tried to make a slick pass, but Brittany Bowen, with that experience, got her hand on the basketball and triggered that fast break. Courtney English, the junior inside, works it to the glass. Not enough English on that shot. Basketball over to Bowen on the rebound. Leighton runs the floor right side. Spinner won't fall good for Trinity. We go back the other way with Allen handling the basketball. 2.27 remains, first period, 14-7 lead for Tuskegee. Inside pass, nicely done there, and a whistle on the turn by Talia Boxley, the sophomore. Boxley, as soon as she got the basketball on the low post along the right-hand side, she went up, and she ran right into the arms of Brittany Bowling, who admittedly caused the foul. So Brittany picks up her first personal for Tuskegee, and it'll be Boxley at the line to shoot. Boxley, the sophomore D, she's only played in three games for the Yellow Jackets. This is her first appearance at the free throw line. And cashes in early. 14-7, Tuskegee still leading after Boxley's first free throw. And she misses on the second. A rebound cleared by Kylie Brown, the sophomore, out on the floor now for Coach Wester and Tuskegee. 
Abdul Rahim thought about the three. Now a foul on extended with the jumper. That's a better range for her. She knocked it down. So she's got four here in this first period of play. 204 remains. Tuskegee with a 16-8 lead over the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. On the move in the corner, Boxley, her shot's off the mark. Basketball run down by McElroy, tiptoeing the inbound line to save it for Tuskegee. Back over to Bolin. McElroy, right side, got some space, looks for the jumper, left at the front of the cylinder on that one. Sophomore Boxley clears for Allen. On a hard push right side and a whistle there. Johnson on the penetration. Abdul Rahim going to be guilty of the foul. And she picks up her first. Team Charles foul number be, three for Tuskegee. Yeah, ahead, Charles, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see the output of energy that Samaya Abdul Rahim puts out tonight. As we mentioned before, a little sinus issue before the game, so she didn't start. She had started the nine previous games. Uh, for the Golden Tigers. A little slow-footed on that one and causing that foul. Front of the iron on the first free throw was Johnson. Coming in at just 41% from the charity strike, 14 of 34 before today's play. Yeah, you got those sinus problems that can affect uh, almost your entire body, certainly in terms of your rhythm. Just throws you off. No harm from the free throw line. That trip by the Yellow Jackets. Tuskegee 16-8 lead. Bolin behind the arc pushes another three. <laughs> Same result for Bolin. Listen, man, she's hot. Heat check. She wasted no time in shooting that basketball, Charles. She's filling it. Yeah, she's got four three-pointers in this first period of play with a minute remaining in it. Barnwell works it right side. Got some space. Nice head fake for her. Can't get the shot off, though. Maya Johnson handles in the front court. Ten to shoot for Allen University. Trapped there in the corner is English. Now bounce pass in traffic, this time almost taken away. Comes off of the leg of Aaliyah Austin. Great yep. defensive work by Tuskegee. Now, Charles, they reset the shot clock. The shot clock should not be reset. They only had like maybe two seconds left to shoot on that. So the Allen, Allen Yellow Jackets, that clock should be reduced to like two seconds, Charles. I think Coach Wester is in agreement with you and the officials coming to the scores table. Now we'll see if all of you are in unison. <laughs> Well, because no one had control of the basketball off that rebound. There was no clear um, change of possession, and there was only two seconds left on the shot clock. All right, all right, you're right. They set the clock at two seconds. Okay. Hey, well, what can I say, Joe? <laughs> it's a new year. <laughs> Trying to better your record this year, huh? <laughs> they put two on the clock, and they don't even realize it, I don't believe. They did That's not, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, Charles, the details matter. The details matter. Each possession is important. Charles, in the course of a ball game, a college basketball game, on average, you're going to get anywhere from 60 to 70 possessions. And you have to maximize every single possession. They did not that trip. So Tuskegee with the basketball. Abdul Rahim in heavy traffic trying to dump it down low. And it's loose on the floor coming away to the Yellow Jackets. Your point in case right there. <laughs> yeah. Didn't maximize that. Spacing just not there for Abdur Rahim in the paint. 16 seconds left first half. Or first period of basketball. 19-8, Tuskegee leads it. Out Yellow Jackets trying to get one before the buzzer in this first period. Floater hard to the rack. The shot's off the mark. A rebound and a put back. The basket was good on the inside. But Victoria Zador, the freshman, and she's fouled. She'll be at the line trying to convert on a three-point play here. Walk before the first period is over. So Victoria Zador doing a nice job of getting in there and battling for that offensive rebound. And then once she got the rebound, she went back up and scored to her credit. Offensive rebounds is no surprise for her. That's her seventh offensive rebound of the season. Missed on the shot. They got another chance here before the buzzer, and they throw it out of bounds. Should be a few fractions of a second put on the clock. We'll see if they do before no, it went out of not, bounds. No, they're not going to uh, put that wave back that off. Board. So yeah. at the end of the first period, it's a 19-10 lead for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee over the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. Geeky basketball continues on the Golden Tiger Sports Network after this timeout.
Hi, I am Jordan Benson, the Sports Information Director at Tuskegee University, and you're watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, future business leader, launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University, we get the business of business education. Headed into the second period of action here from the Daniel Chappie James Center on the campus of Tuskegee University. Tuskegee with a 19-10 lead over the Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets one of five from the free throw line. Tuskegee yet to get there from the floor. Four of 13 for Allen University. We'll pick that up in just a second. We'll pull that graphic back up for you momentarily. Half court set for the Yellow Jackets. They miss on a first field goal opportunity. Now a second look. They miss on that one as well. Austin clears for Tuskegee. Over to Abdul Rahim. Samaya, quick step right side. Down back at the block, Austin Ali. A shot rejected at the block. That's good defensive work there by the defense of Allen University inside the paint. And a foul going to be called. They call it on Sine Bobic. So Sine picks up her first. And so we'll have some uh, substitutions right now for the Golden Tigers. Checking in is Michaela Malik, number 11. Malik actually starting this ball game for Coach Wester, but back on the floor now. We're in our second period action. Half court set for the Old Jackets. They work it inside the Duncan. Now shot in the corner, partially deflected by Abdul Rahim. Absolutely give her credit for that block, Charles. Not very often that a guard gets an opportunity to make a block, but guess what? She's second on the team in blocks this year. That's her fourth block of the year. Indeed she is, the senior from Grand Prairie, Texas. Half court set now, Hankerson with the basketball. Time's gonna run out, time's gonna run out. The same thing again. After that disruption of play, they seemingly not getting back configured about where the time is on the shot clock. Saw that in that first period play late where they just missed an opportunity because of a violation. Inexcusable on that. That responsibility is on the point guard for both teams. You've got to recognize the situation. You're the leader on the floor. Malik right side now over Abdul Rahim. Samaya, good hard step right side. Lost the basketball across the floor, but over to Malik. And Michaela handles it from there with the jumper. I bet you if that shot clock was a cell phone, they'd look oh, at it. No doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> Right side with the basketball. This is Wesley inside the paint. And she got a basket inside. Good work by Wesley. Good footwork by her inside. First time getting on the board for Talia Wesley. She's third on the team in scoring. Averaging 10.7 points a game. Abdul Rahim handles right side. Slides all the way in. Draws the defense. Shot partially blocked inside. And they're going to get her for pushing off with the right uh, left hand. Trying to create some space on the inside. That's her second. So Raheem and Bolin with two for Coach Wester. And Charles, I'm anxious to look back at that graphic as it relates to the turnover scenario because, again, even on that offensive foul, that goes in the book as a turnover. So the Golden Tigers have to do a better job in that department. Half court set with the basketball. door pushes it across the floor. Now a three-point jumper from way outside. That one's knocked down. Good effort there by Destiny Jamison Whitfield, the senior. So she gets into the scoring column with her first field goal, which is a three-pointer. Charles, six different Allen Yellow Jackets have scored in this first half. Six. Philly King out on the floor now for the Golden Tigers. They work it on a weave to Layton. Trinity out front, shot clock working its way down to 10 for Tuskegee. Trinity trying to make a move right side, five to shoot. Up top with the jumper, Malik from outside, missed on it, didn't hit the cylinder, but it'll come clear to Allen anyway. I wonder why the net got wrinkled, Charles. The jumper from out front by Jamison Whitfield, that one's off the mark. They tussle for it at the baseline and it'll belong to Tuskegee. Yeah, that now, Charles, was a let's couple see if of trips down the floor. <laughs> yeah, let's see if they'll stop play to adjust that net. Now, technically, 
in my opinion, they should stop and, and, and correct that net. If we get a shot of the net on, on the Golden Tigers end, you can clearly see where the net is not uh, in its proper position, if you will. I'm surprised <laughs> they haven't stopped play. No, it's resting on the cylinder. That. You're absolutely right. Somebody's got to bring it to their attention. The, the officiating crew, as it's tapped, it'll stay with Tuskegee there on the floor. Well, in the, in the officiating crew's defense, they did tell me before this game, they're looking at protecting the ball handler. That's their point of emphasis for tonight. Well, you got to look up every now and again, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the three-pointer by McElroy. Now she shakes it free, missed on the shot, but the net's in the right position now. As Allen comes back the other way, up top, Hankerson, head fake, trying to penetrate right side, pulls back and leaves it inside the paint. They tie it up there on the inside as Wesley tries to go underneath the defense for a lay-in. What an unselfish play by Juju Harrington, who had the basketball about 10 feet away from the bucket. She easily could have shot that basketball, but instead she laid it off to her teammate that was heading towards the basket and to Leo Wesley, who drew the foul. 6.23 remains, first half of play. Tuskegee with a 21-15 lead. Timeout on the floor. Back with more basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, future business leader. Launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting-edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University. We get the business of business education. Six twenty-three remains, first period of play. Take a look at some of the stats from this first half. You were talking about the turnovers, Walker. There they are on your screen. Allen six, Tuskegee five. And again, that's going to be a key area in determining the victor of this basketball game as we get into the heart of the SIEC schedule. Each game will be critical. And as we mentioned during the pregame, Charles, Tuskegee, they have a target on their backs because they're defending SIAC champions. Right now, Tuskegee, 5 of 10 from behind the arc, three-point shooting. And on the season as a team, you only average 29% from that range. But doing a good job here in this first half of play. Yellow Jackets not too far behind at 2 of 5 shooting from behind the arc. 44% from the floor for Tuskegee, 8 of 18, 6 of 19 shooting for the Yellow Jackets. Well, Charles, if I am Coach Siante Wester, I'm trying to make an emphasis heading back down the court on getting the ball in uh, inside because the Golden Tigers have yet to shoot a free throw, and the Yellow Jackets have zero team fouls so far this quarter. Hmm, clear indication you're right. They need to get in there. Philly King coming away with that rebound. 6-18 left first half. McElroy right side to Trinity. Layton's got a lane to the basket. Now pulls back out front. McElroy dump pass Malik. Now Layton in the corner for three. Back of the iron. That's the shot you want. It just couldn't finish on it. Basketball chased at the sideline. Comes back to Tuskegee on the inside. King missed on her shot. Aaliyah got the rebound right side and she missed. Multiple opportunities beneath the basket for the Golden Tigers. Just couldn't convert. Yeah. Good luck that time, a couple of trip uh, opportunities. Turning back the other way is Wesley. She only needed one, that trip down the floor. She converts on the inside. Wow, that was a nifty move by Wesley, gaining control with the turnaround jumper that softly went into the basket. Have her down unofficially for five points in this first half of play. Shot She's missed right side. Yep, yep, two buckets and a free throw. Allen with the basketball. They cut the lead now to 21-18. Three-pointer in the corner. This one popped up at the rebound, cleared by Austin and Tuskegee. Up the floor, they try to run it to Layton. They shoot it too far, and the turnover sends it back over to the Yellow Jackets. Jazz and McElroy. Yeah, McElroy tried to throw that touchdown pass, but uh, a little off. Fell incomplete. And to your point, Walker, early on, you see Jasmine Manuel being put on the wow. floor now for Coach Wester and likely to try to work on getting that basketball on the inside. Charles McElroy just set out. Now that's rare. Against Edward Waters, Charles, she played the full 40 minutes. So to yep. see her sit out is, is kind of odd. Well, it may very well be what you talked about, Walk. I think she's just trying to get some work on the inside, get perhaps to that free throw line. We will see. But McElroy, you're right, a rare opportunity for her to take a break. Half court set for the Yellow Jackets. Johnson now on the weave, gives it over to Jamison with 
Mayfield, her floater near the foul line is off the mark. Bolin clears for Tuskegee. She has had the hot hand from behind the arc. Right side to Leighton. Trinity gives to Manuel. Foul on extended. Now Malik or Philly King in the corner. Her three-point shot is off the mark. Rebound. Leighton left side. Got the basket. And Trinity's fouled. Trinity doing an excellent job of rebounding on the opposite side of the basket. Normally when you shoot the ball that deep from distance, eight times out of ten the ball is going to come off on the opposite side as it did there. So Trinity with, a, Trinity with a good job of locating on the floor. Got the lay in and a bath. The free throw coming here. Trinity good with the free throw. 430 left first half of play. Tuskegee with a 24-18 lead. After the lay in and free throw by Trinity Layton. The door trying to dump it down in the corner. Traffic there. Basketball turned over by the Yellow Jackets. Back over to Tuskegee. Excellent job by Brittany Bowlin pushing up on the freshman Victoria Zador. And because she played her so close after she picked up her dribble, it caused that pass to sail over the intended target's head out of bounds. Trying to get it in the corner to the junior Nari Ko. But instead, the basketball in a half court set for Tuskegee now. Manuel with the basketball, trying to dump it down low, went too late on the pass. Stolen by the Yellow Jackets. All the That's way in traffic ball. and the whistles. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, Charles. They will call a foul there, but man, oh man, you're right. Looked like a clear tie up that trip down the floor. <laughs> Referee Ronald Adams on the call. From his vantage point, he's saying that she was going up. From our vantage point, it looked like a a tie-up. Sure. Well, that's why we're up here, Charles. Is that why? <laughs> that's the only reason? <laughs> <laughs> we got several reasons why we're up here. <laughs> the door missed on the first. <laughs> and rattled the second good. So it's the door, Charles, with three points for the Yellow Jackets as they creep within five points now of the Golden Tigers lead. Half court set now, Michaela Malik. Outside left flank. Manual handles, now to Philly King. Philly works her way to the top on the weave over to Trinity. 10 to shoot now for the Golden Tigers. In the corner, Philly King pushes a three, missed on the shot. Malik trying to get in for some offensive positioning, but the basketball over to the Yellow Jackets. Philly King was in that hot corner for about five seconds unguarded and she was screaming for the basketball, clapping her hand a couple of times before finally getting it to her. Unfortunately, she couldn't nail the three-point attempt. Ariel McElroy back out on the floor now for Coach Wester in Tuskegee. So it's Malik, McElroy, Leighton, Manuel, and Bolin on the floor. The Yellow Jackets. Half court set, they push it down in the corner to Co. Now on the turn with the jumper, that shot it's off the mark. Tried to get it inside. It was Harrington who missed on the jump shot. Manuel, nice job of boxing out. And she gets the ball in the paint. And now they're going to call an offensive foul against her. Yeah, I could see that one coming there, Walt. So, Jasmine. Charles, in that particular situation, Charles, number one, you don't want your big to have the basketball in traffic 15 feet out away from the basket to take away all that. Took a step there and created the contact inside the paint for the foul. That's her first. Behind the back, it's Johnson. Now left side streaking. Shot rejected by Bach. Bloxley trying to go left side. It was blocked on the inside. Yeah, well, Jasmine. Got a, was well, I thought Jasmine? that was man. I thought it was Manuel, uh, number 44, that got a paw on that basketball. Well, I'll yield to you. Third block on the year for her. Whistles, travel violation there against the Yellow Jackets on that entry pass. Just yep. since that was going to be doomed the way they even got that basketball in play. Maya Johnson doing a little too much with the basketball. 2.35 left first half. McElroy handles out front for Tuskegee. Tuskegee with a 24-18 lead. Had or 19, a mouse, sorry. Had a mouse in the house situation. Manuel was matched up against the much smaller Nari Cole, but they couldn't identify it. 
Down in the corner, Malik has a shot rejected. Good defensive work by Maya Johnson to catch up with that play in the corner for Allen University. Excellent job by Johnson rotating from her guard position over to the corner to deflect that ball out of bounds on the shot. It will stay with the Golden Tigers, though. Bolin will inbound. They've got only four to shoot. Brittany looking to the inside. Got to hurry now. Tried to dump it out. We got it on the floor. And it's loose. They'll have a violation here unless they call the jump ball. They'll get that jump ball call first. But it'll still be the same situation. Tuskegee will have it. Let's see if they recognize, Loose. Charles. One tick. Malik. Where's the... Do they recognize? They she does it. recognize. They did. Why? Oh, spinner play, play ball. Play oh, ball. It fell off. McElroy had a look at it at the buzzer. Didn't stay down. Back the other way in traffic. It's Coe on the penetration left side. Wow. She's fouled. She'll go to the line. That one hurts, Charles. Again, basketball IQ. Layton's going to come up. She's going to be checked out of this game. Why? Because she stood there, Charles, and watched as the basketball rolled around the basket and hit the floor. All she had to do was retain possession of the ball and go right up with the shot. Instead, she blanked out, I guess, for a second, Charles. She probably thought it was going to be a, 30 sec uh, a shot clock violation, but you're taught to play through the whistle. So, unfortunately, she got caught flat-footed there. The freshman from Miami takes a seat as a result with 2.03 remaining. And meanwhile, Brittany Bolin has picked up her third personal. And that's the part that hurts. McElroy at the baseline had to toss it back into play. Luckily, nothing but white jerseys there to get it. We're under two minutes left first half. Tuskegee 24. Yellow Jackets of Allen University 19. Foul on extended Bolin. Now Malik on the turn. The spinner is off the mark, but a whistle inside the paint. Cole says, who, me? Yes, you. First personal on her, Charles, and just the second team foul in this second period of play. That'll send Michaela to the line to shoot for the Golden Tigers. Got to get her numbers a lot more north from the free throw line. Three of eight coming into today's ball game at 36% free throw shooting. Won't up a percentage on that first one. She missed there. Well, 38 percent, 37 and a half, Charles. I know she wants every percentage point she can get, especially after that first miss. Let's see if she can put it in the basket. Same result missed on that one as well. Rebound cleared by Juju Harrington for the Yellow Jackets. Coe across the timeline with it. Hard push, Johnson stops, pops, tried to bank it, but missed on the shot. Basketball over to Tuskegee. McElroy at the mid stripe had it tapped away. Good defensive work by the Yellow Jackets, and they'll get rewarded with an easy lay in right side. Zidor with the basket for the Yellow Jackets after a good defensive steal by Johnson at the mid stripe. A minute 12 left, the lead is three now for Tuskegee. Malik, right side. Bowling and they throw it out of bounds. Charles, this whole second period has been ugly. They need to get Jasmine Manuel out of the ball game. She is laboring, running back up the floor. And Charles, historically, at least this season, the second period has been kind of bad for the Golden Tigers. They scored only 119 points all season. It's the, the, the quarter they scored the least amount of points in, and they've scored only five so far in this stanza. Under a minute remains inside to the glass. A shot is off the mark, and finally Malik clears for Tuskegee. But Johnson sneaking in on the defensive and almost taking that one away from McElroy. And McElroy's, uh, McElroy's going to come out because she's not into it. I would presume, yes, they're going to take her out. Charles, again, we emphasize all the time about how important ball possession is. you got to take care of the basketball, trip in and trip out. Samaya Abdurrahim out on the floor. Now over to Malik. Cutting on the inside is Bobbitt. Her shot's rejected at the block. Good defensive work there on the inside by Courtney English. Chance for the Yellow Jackets to tie it with a three-pointer. Cut it to one. And the basketball's taken away by Bobbitt. Jump ball going to be called. And it'll stay with the Yellow Jackets. Bobbitt really wanted that basketball. And she showed it by getting in there and just literally trying to rip it out of the hands of the Allen Yellow Jackets player. 27.5 seconds left first half. Tuskegee leading it 24-21. Coe pushes it inbound into play to English. Now top, back up top to Coe. 
On the weave, Johnson on the move. Inside the paint, foul on extended. Nicely done by her with the jumper. Good execution, that trip down the floor by the Yellow Jackets. Tuskegee trying to play for one before the buzzer. Bowling, left side, cross dribble, and she's tied up. Can't get it away, and that is how the first half ends. Tuskegee retains the lead, but about as narrow as it can be. They lead it 24-23 at the intermission over the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. Take a break here inside Chappie James Center. More basketball just ahead on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors, and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors, and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store.
Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. And we are back live inside Chappie James at the intermission of the women's game. Tuskegee leading it by a point, 24-23, over the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. And that gets us set to turn our attention to men's action, which comes up after this, which means we're joined at halftime of this ball game by head coach Benji Taylor. Coach, happy holidays to you. Happy New Year to you. Happy holidays to you. Happy New Year. And uh, we're back at home now. Hopefully we can get one on the road, uh, at home here. Stuck on two right now coming out of the first half of the season. Right. Four games here inside of Chappie. How important is it going to be to really get off this nod really quickly here on this four-game set? You know, we, uh, you know, we have a lot of long-term goals, and uh, we still can reach those. We just got to start playing well. I mean, you're not playing well. We got to start finishing games. Sure. You know, make free throws. You know, do the simple things. And uh, we're doing the hard part. We're in every game. We're playing hard. We're defending. Just got to do the little things. Yeah, we've seen it all season long. First in 2023, the team is there, and there's just that one or two things right. that happen at the end that right. just kind of turn the flavor of the ball game. Right. What right. attention have you been giving it during the, the time that we had off since the ball game against Georgia Southwestern? We just got back to work, and we a B we've been A B C in it, you know, doing the basics and uh, trying to you know take care take care of better, better care of the ball, execute a little bit better, uh, but keep rebounding, keep defending, and uh, KD and Martez missed 14, uh, 13 free throws last game, and it's a one possession one possession game with 30 seconds left. So, you know, they felt really bad about that. So they've been in the gym, and they've been shooting it well from the line, and and uh, hopefully we can get them there. I think they went uh, 21 times between them. Uh -huh. Can't ask for anything else on the road. Uh, they played a fabulous game. I think they had 36 points and 20 rebounds amongst them. So uh, they just didn't make free throws. So we got to do a better job at, at this game. Second half of the season, we're here in Chappie, James. You're right. meeting the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. They right. come in front of a respectable record. What do you expect from them? Oh, the they're, they're good. They're very well coached. Um, um, they're very uh, very diverse. They're very balanced. They don't have an 18, 20 point score. They got a, a lot of you know 12 to 9 point scores. So they can score in bunches. Uh, they play very hard. They mix up their defenses pretty well. And uh, they, I'm, I'm pretty, I've been pretty impressed with them on, on, uh, on film. Yeah, it's like you said all along, it's a gauntlet in this it's a gauntlet. college. It's a gauntlet. And it continues with the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, there, there are no easy wins. I mean, I, you know, unless teams are looking to play us, I mean, everybody is good. Everybody's good. So, you know, we're uh, we going to have to play well every night. We were joking about it a little bit earlier today when we got to the arena, kind of talking about this theme of uh, and things just keep coming our way. We talk a little bit about injuries. We know without Kevin tonight, we're also without DeAnthony with his previous injury. Kind of shakes things up for you in terms of having to make some other decisions, but had to actually do it in that Georgia Southwestern game and that yeah. group that you put out played yeah. extremely well. Yeah, you know, our bench really stepped up, and you know tonight we're going to be without uh, DeAnthony split his hand back open again and have no idea for a, a timetable on his return. And then uh, Kevin Sesbury don't have a timetable for his return with his thigh bruise, but. 
You know, his first game that he was available to play, he had 19 points and I think five rebounds and four assists or something. So, you know, that's a big blow for us not having our backcourt. But, hey, that's the next man up. That's absolutely right. you got to step up, right? Well, talking about stepping up, Martez Jones gave you almost everything he could have in that Georgia Southwestern ballgame. Yeah. And I know you're looking for him to rise as a leader in the second half of the season. Yeah, you know, he, he's got to be consistent as well. You know, he'll play two or three good games, and he'll play, you know, a couple of subpar games. But that's a part of his maturation process. And, you know, all these guys are in much different roles than they've ever been in before. You know, Martez wasn't a go-to guy last year. DP wasn't a go-to guy last year. But now we're putting them in places and situations they're not comfortable with. Kasami Draper. And I think they've all, they're all they all growing. And uh, we just got to, you know, come together at the right time and, and get all the ingredients together at the right time and available at the right time. And that's, uh, that's been a struggle for us, especially now with the injuries. Yeah, we talked about this before. We'll ask the question about what are you going to be looking for earlier. Probably we, we need to make it what are we going to be looking for later in the ball game. Right. But I know you want a real good start here on this four-game set. So right. what's going to be your key early to let you know that you're right where you want to be as a team? In this we're we're, we're, we're going to have to play discipline, close out defense, and we got to keep them out of the paint. And uh, they're uh, very scrappy on the boards. They're not a huge team, but – you know, all four guys or that are on the floor will rebound the ball. So we got to make sure we keep them off the glass and and uh, take care of the basketball. We had 11 turnovers first half last game. Wound up with four for the second half. So we wound up doing okay. Coach, as always, we wish you the best in the ball game tonight. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Head coach Benchy Taylor as the Golden Tigers get set to host the Yellow Jackets of Allen University in men's action. That's coming your way on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Stay with us. Thank you. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. We're back live inside Daniel Chaffee James Center on the campus of Tuskegee University, getting set for second half action of women's basketball play. Take a look at the first half stats, Walker. Tuskegee with a 24-23 lead. 
Out of 28 shooting from the floor for Tuskegee in this first 20 minutes of play, a 32% shooting. Same for the Yellow Jackets of Allen, the exact same, 9 of 28 from there. Behind the arc, Tuskegee a bit better there, 5 of 15 shooting from behind the arc, 2 of 6 for the Yellow Jackets. Rebounding edge slightly in favor of the Golden Tigers. Turnovers, that's that big category we always try to keep an eye on. And Tuskegee right now with 10. And uh, the Yellow Jackets with 8 in that first. Some of the team stats there. Individual scoring walk, first 20 minutes. Yes, sir. For the Golden Tigers, Brittany Boland led all scores with 12 points. She was 4 of 5 from distance. She had four three-point baskets for 12 points. Samai Abdurrahim has four. Ariel McElroy's got three. And there was one more I wanted to tell you about. Trinity Layton has three. For the Allen Yellow Jackets, Talia Wesley had five, as well as freshman Victoria Zador. Play has already begun. A couple of transitions, turnovers, basketballs back to Tuskegee now is with 9.39 left in the third. They have it with a one-point lead. Jumper down in the corner, free for an easy one there as Bobbitt to get things started here in the second half of play. First time she's getting on the board here, Charles, tonight. Want to see her get going. She's averaging three, uh, eight points per game. Half court set for the Yellow Jackets now. On the wee wee wee, it's Coe. Now left side, Hankerson tied up at the foul line. Tried to go underneath the defense. And a jump ball called. Referee Andrea Butter called that jump. It's going to be an alternating possession, and the Yellow Jackets will retain the ball. Coach Latoya Jones for the Yellow Jackets beside herself about that call. Thought she should have had a foul called against one of her players. Duncan up top to Co. Zone defense for the Yellow Jack or the Golden Tigers, but just before the buzzer, Co knocks down a three-pointer. Wow. Five points for her. Uh, that was I'm not going to call it luck, but the play clock definitely was winding down. So make it 26-26 after that basket. And a whistle on a half-court set here on the Tuskegee end of the floor. Fantastic job by McElroy to locate Michaela Malik that was in the lane. Although we saw McElroy struggle a bit in the first half with a couple of turnovers, she did have three assists in the first 20 minutes of play, and a nice look there inside to a cutting Michaela Malik. So at the line, Malik will be shooting for the Golden Tigers with 8.40 left in the third. And Michaela and, missed on that first. And Charles, she shot two of the three free throws for the Golden Tigers. She missed both of them, and now she misses that one. So the Golden Tigers are 1-4 and four overall from the line. She's 0 of 3. Michaela for the second. And she missed on the second. Basketball over to the Yellow Jackets. Half court set for Coe. 827 remaining in this third. They try to dump it down low inside and taken away by the Golden Tigers. Now it's thumped up into the back court and back over to the Yellow Jackets. Hankerson slides a pass down at the block and too far on the pass, trying to get it down low to Duncan. So we go back the other way. That ended up being a flat donut right there, that turnover. Pass was low. If it was a donut, I would have picked it up. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Back the other way. They tried another one. There's another donut there, Walker. That the yellow, the Golden Tigers tried to get it inside to Austin and too far inside. Hey, speaking of donuts, are you a Krispy Kreme <laughs> guy or are you a, a Dunkin' Donut guy? Which guy are you? I'm are old you school, a, man. I was Dunkin around. Dunkin' Donuts? No. Oh. Krispy Kreme's older, oh, right? Oh, oh, no, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Grew up on those things. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you I once went on a, a, a donut diet? Get out of here. I did. Whistles at the block. and have a foul called on the yellow jacket end of the floor. Call the foul on Austin. 
All right, so Aaliyah Austin, that's just her first yeah. personal foul, Charles. There are a couple of Golden Tigers that are in foul trouble. Brittany Boland committed three fouls in that first half, while Sanea Bobbitt, as well as Samaya Abdurrahim, committed a couple fouls apiece. Yeah, both had to kind of alter their playing time in that first half. Basketball's loose on the floor. Malik dives for it. And right now, after that free throw, the Yellow Jackets with a 27-26 lead. And Tuskegee will have the basketball. And for Malaysia Williams, who converted that free throw, she gets on the board for the very first time tonight. 7.38 left in the third. Samaya so Abdurrahim out on the floor. She'll replace Michaela Malik. Michaela struggled in this ball game so far. And, and be, good piece of coaching right here is Coach Wester pulls her to the side and grabs her, Charles, and is having a conversation with her, just trying to boost her confidence. So excellent. Nice recogni uh, recognizing that, Charles. Entry pass on the floor to Bobbitt. Tried to bank it at the front. Missed on the shot. McElroy got the rebound. Missed on her shot. Left side. Rebound. Johnson. Here come the Yellow Jackets. Mm. Maya works it right side. Slides behind the arc. Now up top to Coe. Coe on the move. Nice slide pass over to Duncan. But she can't finish. Got her own rebound and finished second time through. Cole going through that, Cole going through that hole looking like uh, Tua from the Dolphins and handing that basketball <laughs> <Yeah>. off. <laughs> <laughs> sure did, yeah. 29-26 across the floor, McElroy with the basketball. Bolin, jumper for three, got it again. Picking up where she left off in the first half of play. Charles, 15 points, all 15 via three points. Half court set, now they go to that zone look the yellow, the Golden Tigers do against that Yellow Jacket offense. Set 6.30 remains, third period. Here comes Coe again, pushes back out Johnson. Lost her dribble, now Coe's free, fires a three, backside rebound fought for. They tie up there near the baseline. Allen underneath that pile, or Austin that is, underneath the pile for Tuskegee. Look for a foul to be called here, I would suspect. <laughs> well, they called a traveling violation on that, and it's going to be uh, Allen University's basketball. They called the travel against Aaliyah Austin, so that's a tough call. And speaking of turnovers, the Golden Tigers committed 10 in that first half compared to 8 by the Allen Yellow Jackets. Wesley will inbound it, left of the cylinder for Allen University. Tied at 29. SIAC action here from the Tuskegee campus. Charles, first time this game has been tied since it was 0-0. Johnson behind the arc, hard push by her right side, a blocking foul there on Abdul Rahim. That'll be her third. Well, Johnson used her left hand, if you ask me, to sort of ward Abdul Rahim off of the basket. So I suspect, Charles, the next time Johnson goes back to that move, they're going to call an offensive foul. Entry pass on the inside, nicely done, and they got a basket inside by Jamison Whitfield and a whistle. And guess what? The Allen University Yellow Jackets, they take the lead. 31-29 after the nice work on the footwork of Whitfield on the inside to get the basket and a foul. Fourth time the lead has changed so far in this game as Destiny Jamison Whitfield converts the three-point play. And she's got six points overall in the contest with the Yellow Jackets leading it now by three. 6.06 remaining in the third. Trinity Layton not on the floor now for Coach Wester and Tuskegee. Whitney Boland handles out front. So it's Boland, Abdul Rahim, Layton, Philly King, and Jasmine Manuel on the floor. King handles out front. Back over to Boland. Samaya, hard push at the block, drew some traffic there, doubled, now fights it back to Bowling, three, cocks it three, missed on this one though. Rebound, comes clear up the floor, it's Johnson ahead of the defense, got an easy lay-in. Bowling got caught looking at that three-point attempt instead of hustling back on defense and got lost in the transition. So back the other way. And Abdul Rahim answers with a basket there for Tuskegee. To make it 34-31 and a turnover there. Here comes Tuskegee with the basketball, trailing by three with 5-10 left. Abdul Rahim, hard push, top of the key. 
Samaya, space left side from the free throw line, knocked it down. That was back Silky's to back baskets. Charles, Silky smooth. She scored four points in the first half. She's got four in the second half, eight overall, and there's a timeout on the floor. Comes with 5.04 remaining, and it comes with Tuskegee closing the gap. They trail it by one, 34-33 over the Golden Tigers. It's Golden Tigers of Tuskegee battling the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. Broadcast coverage of Tuskegee University basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network is brought to you by TNT Fireworks, America's best-selling brand of and the largest distributor of consumer fireworks. 504 left, Tuskegee basketball. Several sponsors that we certainly like to call out as much as we can on air. Booster Digital Displays is another proud supporter of Tuskegee basketball as the exclusive provider of the digital scoreboards scorers table right here inside the annual Chappie James Center and the new state-of-the-art jumbotron and scoreboard at Cleve Abbott Stadium. Booster Digital Displays is committed to boosting Tuskegee Athletics to the next level. For more information on the affordable and innovative Booster Digital Display product line, visit www.boosterdisplays.com. And as my friend Dwayne Walker would say, that's Booster without the E. I just can't do it as suave and as Yeah, you can, as Charles. You can, right? It's all in the delivery. No. <laughs> <laughs> I missed hey, that day of I... broadcasting school. <laughs> Listen, man, let's see if the Golden Tigers can deliver in this second half. Charles, what's nice about this Golden Tigers squad, they do score more points as the quarters go along. Half court set down for the Yellow Jackets. Down at the block, they work it right side. Harrington, her spinner at the, off the cylinder, and rebound tapped by Layton over to Manuel. Four thirty-eight left in this third period of play. Bowling working off of a screen, right side hard push by Brittany to the rack, got the lay in and the whistle. Brittany Bowling did an excellent job, Charles, of mixing it out. Maya Johnson was so afraid of Brittany Bowling pulling back and letting go of a three. Instead, Bowling switched it up, attacked the defender, and got an and one. Well, she's gotten the three the easy way from behind the arc. Now trying to get one the hard way with the lay-in and a free throw. That'll come after the timeout. 4.30 remaining. Tuskegee back on top, 35-34 over the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. Yeah, it's a great time for Tuskegee University Golden Tigers to get vaccinated. Many children and adults that delayed vaccinations during the pandemic are still behind schedule. It's crucial that we take steps to get everyone back on track with their routine immunizations. Children and teens can still catch up on their immunizations even if they started late. Make sure you and your family are up to date on all recommended vaccinations, including COVID-19 and flu. Let's all do our part to get back on track. Don't wait. Vaccinate. For more information, visit alabamapublichealth.gov backslash IMM. Tuskegee back out on the floor first. Bowling with a hard push right side, got a lay-in, and at the line to shoot a free throw. And Bowling at the line giving Philly King a couple of pointers, showing that uh, upperclassman leadership. Fifth lead change now, Charles, as the Golden Tigers jump back out on front. As you mentioned, 35-34, the chance to extend the lead to two. Brittany rattles that free throw good. So we asked that question of you in the pregame walk about how important it's going to be for McElroy and Boland to really assert themselves in the second half of the season. We're seeing it with Brittany so far in this first contest in 2024. Outstanding performance by her in this contest thus far. Johnson pushes a three, missed on the three. Bolin there for the rebound. Right Brittany. on cue, Charles. Yeah. Philly trying to run it down and just couldn't control it, but Abdul Rahim took it away from Boxley in the corner. Now the Yellow Jackets take it away from the Golden Tigers. Johnson left side, this time Brittany with the fouls. Couldn't even challenge her at the block, and Johnson got an easy lay in. Johnson smartly went right up with the basketball, recognizing that Bolin was in foul trouble and was not going to stick her hand in to cause a foul. 3.42 left in the third, tied at 36. Abdul Rahim behind the back left side. Had it ripped away from her as she was going up for the jump shot, but she ties it up, and we'll see where the arrow puts it. Looks like it's going to favor the Yellow Jackets, if that's going to be the call. 
Both players aggressively going after the basketball, and I give Sanaya, I give her credit, Charles, because we know she, she's not feeling well with the sinus issue, yet she was willing to give up her body and go to the ground and try to grasp that basketball. So uh, extraordinary effort by that young lady. Arrow will go with the Yellow Jackets. 3.32 left in the third, tied at 36. Full court press now here, Charles, by the Golden Tigers. Hankerson handles it left side. She has been relatively quiet for Allen University. She'll have it in the corner this time. Got some space for three. I think we walk her up. I should have yeah, shut my mouth. Yeah, took the words right out of my mouth, Charles. She hit a three in the corner. Make it 39-36. Allen reclaims the lead. Samaya with the basketball. Trinity pops out the handle up top. Now Philly King across the floor. Samaya cross dribbled inside the plate. Floater to the rack. Boy, did that thing fall forward for her. <laughs> what a kind rim for Samaya Abdur Rahim. Ten points, Charles. She's in double digits. Left corner now on the move is Wesley. Her shot rejected at the block. Here comes Tuskegee now, trailing by a point. Jazz Emanuel, nice job of walling up there to defend that basketball shot. Entry pass, Jasmine. Over to Philly King, pushes a three. Philly knocks it down. Finally, Charles, the bench was willing that basketball to go in as Philly King gets on the board for the first time tonight. Philly King with a third three-pointer on the season. The junior from Snellville, Georgia, gets Tuskegee a lead. And now, Walker, they found that. <laughs> <laughs> this we talked about in the first half. Charles, get this. They have an observer here today, and I went down to the court and oh asked him and said, hey, just out of curiosity, if the net gets, you know, jangled up, can the official stop it? And he says, well, they can, or they can let it play. Oh, wow. In the first period, they let it play. All of a sure. sudden now, <laughs> they fixed it up. So sorry, guys. I hope. <laughs> well. Sorry Probably was some conversation for them at locker in the locker room at halftime. Well, sure. Well, shouts out to Ronald Adams, Stanley Warmerly, and Andrea Butler. Uh, they're doing a fantastic job so far this evening. Whistles out front. This is Destiny Jamison Whitfield trying to go on a little excursion to get her for a travel violation. 2.05 left in the third. Tuskegee up by a basket. 41-39. Bolin approaches the timeline for Tuskegee. Philly King just did a three-pointer her last trip down the floor. Abdul Rahim, she'll pluck a three-pointer. Rattled it good for wow. Tuskegee. Charles, sometimes they say when you're under the weather, you're more focused. Yeah. Abdul Rahim has been exactly that tonight. Yeah, you're absolutely right. She's been on target. Outside, this is Whitfield, her errant three-point shot. Rebound by Trinity, three-on-two basketball. Trinity all the way to the rack right side. Can't finish it, though. Smart move by Trinity yep. to try to attack the basket and draw contact. Hankerson back the other way. Across the floor now. There's a door to the rack, and somehow got that basketball to the cylinder. It fell good for her. I have lefty's to, going to the line. I had to go and check the sheet here. It says she is a freshman, Charles, a five foot seven inch freshman, a sports management major. Well, she managed to get to the basket nice and smooth on that one, Charles. Impressed by that move. Good work by Zadora. She'll be shooting for a chance for the three point play. It says she's from Cocoa, Florida. Oh. Which I know Cocoa Beach. Yeah, I was going to say, I've heard of Cocoa <laughs> Beach, right. Looking for point number eight tonight, Charles. Free throw is good. She's got her eight. Tuskegee still leads, though, 44-42. A minute 13 left in the third. Bowling across the timeline, right side to Samaya. Works off of her screen by Leighton. Lost her dribble, dumps it down at the block, Trinity. Trinity, head fake inside the paint, turns with the jumper, front of the iron. Manuel with the rebound, and Jasmine to the line after she's fouled. Oh, Yeoman's work there by Miss Manuel. Battled, got that offensive rebound, and had the smarts to take it right back into the defender, Courtney English, who was out of position, and caused the foul. Less than a minute remaining in the third. Jasmine with a chance to increase that Tuskegee lead. Leads the team from the free throw line at 82% shooting. 22 of 27 coming in to tonight's ball game. Give her another one, Charles. Got the first. And the second. 
First two points of the game for a two, Charles, but that's going to up her free throw percentage, too. Hankerson across the timeline now for the Yellow Jackets. Right side to the door. Now on a weave, Whitfield takes it. Shot clock working his way toward 10. Hankerson fires and drills from outside. So back to back field goals by her. Both three point baskets too, Charles. She's got eight now. Leading score for this Allen Yellow Jacket squad. Tuskegee can run this right down to the buzzer and get a shot off before we head into the fourth. Bolin, nine to shoot, turns into paint, runs into traffic, foul called on the inside. Oh yeah, Charles, Destiny Jamison Whitfield <laughs> tried to box Brittany Bolin in, but Bolin beat her to the punch. So it'll be Brittany at the line shooting. Looks like they gave that foul to Courtney English inside for the Yellow Jackets walk. So Brittany will be shooting for Tuskegee. Oh, wait a minute. That's Holyfield, not Whitfield. Ah. <laughs> Charles, I, I thought I was going with the Holyfield boxing out. It, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. Well, I know you're kind of punch drunk over here. So <laughs> whatever, whatever you're saying, <laughs> most of us can't follow. <laughs> Bolin got it from the line, both of them make it 48-45. It's early in the year, Walker. You know we have to kind of work our way into your references, brother. <laughs> we all take that time off over the holidays, get kind of slack, and the ears get yeah, a little inattentive. Yeah, yeah, that's You're true. sparking us back up. <laughs> Two to shoot here. Basketball's on the floor. That'll bring this third period to an end. Tuskegee. Leads at 48-45 after three periods of play. We'll take a break here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network and get you set for the final frame here from Chappie James. Hey, future business leader. Launch your success story. I want Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Learn cutting-edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University. We get the business of business education. What does education mean? when you choose the top HBCU in Alabama. Um, so one of the things that's been most valuable for my experience at Tuskegee is being able to face challenges head on. Um, I can definitely say here, I've learned how to be an advocate for myself, how to speak up and how to present myself in ways that can help me get opportunities, to help me fix things that may not be right. And I think that's really just the best skill that I've learned here that I can take with me for the rest of my life. Look forward to your bright future. Apply to Tuskegee University today. The Utilities Board of Tuskegee is a proud sponsor of Golden Tigers basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. UBT puts the power in your hands to enjoy the things that matter most. Utilities Board of Tuskegee. Purpose, progress, people. Over there at their headquarters earlier today, meeting with the general manager, Gerald Long, and uh, had a good conversation with him chance to just thank them for their support of our coverage. Brittany right side now lost the dribble back out to Abdul Rahim. Samaya's trying to get it inside the manual and threw it right into the hands of Whitfield. Whitfield works it left side to the rack and banked it over Abdul Rahim for the basket. 48-47 after Whitfield's basket. Samaya trying to answer right away. Spinner hit the front of the iron to the back and came out. Allen can take the lead on this possession, Charles, so it's important that the Golden Tigers hold firm. But they don't, as that bucket is going to be scored inside by Juju Harrington, Charles. That's the first time we've called Juju Harrington's name tonight. First time on the board. 49-48 after the basket by Harrington. Gives the lead back over to the Yellow Jackets. Abdul Rahim out front for Tuskegee. Now over to Layton in left corner. Trinity squares trying to get it to Manuel. Dumped it there to Jasmine. Across the paint, she slides right side all the way through. Got a basket and a whistle. Excellent job by Jasmine Manuel, Charles. And if you want somebody to go to the line for this group, especially in this late stage of the game, you want it to be Jasmine Manuel. She has been exemplary 
at the free throw line so far this season as a big leading this team from the charity stripe. She's 24 of 29 on the season. 8.51 remains in the third. Tuskegee by a point. Now by two as Jasmine knocked down that free throw to finish off the three-point play. And Charles, speaking of quarters, the Tuskegee Golden Tigers, they score most of their points in the fourth quarter. 166 points coming into this one through nine games. They try to dump it down low to Yellow Jackets do, but they leave it short, trying to get it to Boxley. Basketball into the hands of Brittany Bolin. Brittany, nice cross dribble right side. Got some space, spots with the jumper. Spinners off the mark though. Boxley, the sophomore, gets the rebound for Allen University and they come back the other way. Charles, surprised we haven't seen a lot of Ariel McElroy in this contest. She normally logs the most minutes for this Golden Tigers team, but she's been sitting out in various spurts during this ball game. Samaya works with a cross court, Philly King. Philly behind the back, got some space, got the jumper free, missed on the shot. Could very well be. Now you talk about in that first half, you saw her coming back down court on one transaction, was really just shaking her hand violently like she may have gotten it injured. We're not real sure, not forecasting anything there, but you're right, McElroy on the bench right now. Charles, it seems like a lot of hand injuries have been going on with both the women's and men's teams. Indeed. Anthony Pennington of note for the men's program. A rebound after a missed shot by the Yellow Jackets, cleared by Leah Austin and Tuskegee. You were saying? About Pennington's hand, you said he missed, did he missed last game? He did miss last ball game and actually slated to miss this one as well. And you talked to Coach Taylor during the women's contest at halftime, and he said that it's really kind of no telling when he's going to actually be back. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's certainly a big loss, Charles. Sure. Big part of their offensive production, DeAnthony Pennington. He was warming up with the team today, taking jump shots. But if you go back in there and tear that thing again, the chances of you coming back for this season are even, even more remote. 7.22 left here in this basketball game. It's a 51-49 lead for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Half court set, basketball into the hands of Harrington. They try to dump it back down low. They got it inside to Wesley. Wesley whistles and a turnover by her as she traveled inside the paint. Good job. Already on, clear. Yeah, I was going to say, good job by the defender not to get rattled. She stood her ground, walled up, and actually caused that turnover. Yeah, I think Wesley was a little bit surprised that she didn't have defense just right clamped on her inside the paint. Abdur Rahim handles half court set now for Tuskegee. Now McElroy back out on the floor. She'll handle up top. On the weave, had it taken away, and they're going to have a foul called as McElroy trying to catch up Maya, with Maya Johnson commits the foul. And that was actually a smart foul. Uh, McElroy, who hasn't really been herself tonight, Gave up that basketball on the turnover and smartly caused that foul. Otherwise, it would have been a two-point basket back the other way. Certainly not what Coach Wester wanted, reinserting McElroy into the lineup, though, committing that foul. And it's turned over. McElroy comes clear with it for Tuskegee. A little get back. Mm -hmm. Up top, Bowling. Brittany surveys. Now back pedals. We go down to 630. They pop out on her over to Ariel. Foul on extended floater by McElroy. That's good. There we go, Charles. She's got five points now. Let's see if she heats up in this final period to get it going. Yeah, soft touch on that running jumper. 53-49 after the two from McElroy. Get it. West out front. Shot clock at 13 and a whistle. That's a travel there on Harrington. Harrington, that big, I stressed it earlier, Charles, you don't want to give your bigs the basketball 15 feet away from the basket and have them try to make an offensive move because it's something that you wouldn't ordinarily do as a big. Yeah, Juju took two, two, many steps that time for the basketball over to Tuskegee with 6.01 left in this contest. Did you say Juju took two, two many steps? You didn't hear me say that. <laughs> yes, I did. You said that, didn't you? That was an echo. Oh, <laughs> okay. Me. Okay. It wasn't me, boss. I'm hearing things. <laughs> Hankerson back the other way now for the Yellow Jackets. She's free in the corner, spins her three, and it comes out of there. A rebound to Aaliyah Austin and to Tuskegee. Austin has been doing a terrific job tonight, Charles, of boxing out her player. 
McElroy, half court set now, trying to work off of a screen by Aaliyah. Bounce pass over to Brittany. Brittany, foul on extended, comes up with the jumper, missed on the shot. But there's Austin inside. Her putback was blocked on the inside. Good defensive work at the block by Wesley. She will handle it out front. Spins near the free throw line now. Left side, Boxley at the block. She beat Austin there and got a lay in. Got to give credit for Talia Boxley for getting into position to score her first bucket of the game. It's coming here with under five minutes to play. 53-51, Tuskegee leads Abdul Rahim. Hard push by her, lean back, back out, bowling free for three. Air ball there, and that one out of bounds over to the Yellow Jackets. Charles, here's an interesting point about three-point baskets today. The Golden Tigers started out in the first period, Charles, in the first half, they hit Five of eight, but then in the second quarter, they went zero for seven. And overall in the game tonight, eight of 22 for 36.4%. Yeah. And I've got, I'm sorry, Charles, I've got to give him credit too for shooting free throws. Other than the four misses by Malik, everyone else has been perfect from the free throw line, including Jazz Emanuel, who scored four baskets from the charity strike. Good call on that because you referenced that early on that free throws can make a big difference. Right now, it's one of the reasons that Tuskegee still enjoys a two-point lead. Turnovers tied at 17 each. Neither coach going to be happy about that number so far. 53-51, these numbers we're looking at on the screen really reflects the closeness of this basketball game. But I got to tell you something, Charles. I like the Golden Tigers' chances because they've been tested all season long late in ball games and more times than not more often than not they come through so uh i'm looking for more for more of that pattern as we wind this one down with 441 to play nice ball because that's what we saw in the finish of the 2023 portion of the season at edward waters they had to go right down to the wire to win that one they won at 64 62. saw him do the same thing at columbus state charles Half court set for the Yellow Jackets. Cole with a push at the block, slides all the way through. Her pass out and trying to get it beyond the three point range in the corner was batted out of bounds. It'll stay with Allen University. Samaya Abdur Rahim doing an excellent job of getting her hands in the passing lane, deflecting that ball out. Entry pass, Duncan back up top to Cole. Uh, Wesley, quick shot pass to Blockley, Boxley inside the paint, missed on the shot. Rebound, Duncan. Across the floor to Boxley again. And out of bounds. It'll stay with the Yellow Jackets. So shot clock at 16. Coe to reset it on an inbound. Duncan to Boxley. 4-10 left. Wesley going to fire him on a three-pointer and is fouled behind the arc by Jasmine Manuel. And Manuel's going to step to the free throw line and shoot not one, not two, but three free throws. And smarts by the freshman to hit the deck as soon as she let that basketball go. That's basketball IQ, Charles. He gets that first free throw for the Yellow Jacket. It's Talia Wesley shooting him. Chance to give them a lead if she can hit all three. Two of three so far, and we're tied at Charles, 53. I, I suspect she's going to make all three, Charles. She, she's, look, she's looked smooth for a freshman. She really has. She's, look, she's looked solid. Yeah, supposition's right. She got them all. And the Yellow Jackets lead it now 54-53. Abdul Rahim across the floor to Bowling. Now to McElroy. Now Abdul Rahim. Right side of the floor. McElroy, you know, bowling this is for three. Oh, yeah, found that stroke again. Charles, she had to avoid the, the closeout and still shoot that basketball in rhythm, in which she did. She's got yeah. 22 points, Charles, tonight. Hankerson pushes back to Coe. Now out behind the arc is Wesley on the move left side now. 
to the glass, left it short, got her own rebound though. Threw it right over to Samaya Abdul-Rahim. She'll go one-on-one -on -one with Hankerson. Samaya, floater to the glass, missed. Rebound, put back, right side. That one's off the mark by Bobbitt. And the Yellow Jackets clear it out of there. Squandered opportunity there on the offensive rebound and put back. Cole back the other way, did not squander her opportunity. Left side with a lay-in to tie it at 56. That's a four-point turnaround, Charles. Bolin over to Abdul Rahim. We're under three minutes left. Still love the Golden Tigers' chances here. Manuel foul on extended. Bobbitt with a jumper. Right corner, can't find it. Hankerson clears. And Cole comes across the timeline. This Yellow Jacket team predicted to finish fifth in the conference in preseason voting. Coming into today's ball game in fourth in the East. Hankerson works it out front, eight to shoot. She'll lob the three-pointer shot and air ball. Basketball over to the Golden Tigers. And Charles, even though the Yellow Jackets come in with a record of four and five overall, now is the time. Everything that happened before, a lot of obviously a lot of non-conference games. You're trying to figure out what your lineup's going to be. You're trying to you know learn the identity of your team. But at this juncture, this stage of the season, January heading into February, uh, it's crucial. Every, you know, like I said, every game is important. Every possession is important. And uh, stuff is getting real now. 2.20 remains. And Brittany will pick it up near the half-court stripe and into the half-court set. And that's smart. Up top, Leighton on the floor. She handles now across the floor. McElroy and Amac on track, knocks down the three. She's got eight, Charles, heating up. Now it's about quantity, not quality, not so much about quantity. With a minute 57 left, Boxley trying to answer, but she missed. Amac with a rebound. And Charles, at this point, you want to utilize clock now. The clock is your friend. You lead it by three. And we talked about ball securities being important here. Layton pops out to handle the basketball. Now Brittany lets the defense fly by. Now to do Raheem foul on extended Samaya. Oh, yeah, that's cake for her. Love it. You said that's cake for her, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a Rihanna reference. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 15 points for Samaya Abdul Rahim. Sinus situation at all. There you go. 61 56, Tuskegee leads. Take a time out here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Credit it to the two players you talked about, McElroy and Bolin, really asserting, showing leadership on the floor in terms of their play, but in terms of the temperament of this team overall with 39 seconds left. Game stats up at this point, 38% shooting from the floor for Tuskegee, 22 of 58. Well, look at that, almost mirror there by the Yellow Jackets as well. They're 21 of 55 at 38%. What's that, 20? Oh. 55 possessions, 58 shots. Somebody was talking go, about a number like that early on. Try to tell you, <laughs> Charles. Try to tell you what I'm saying. <laughs> I know you were right at some point earlier in the day. You're probably right for the second time hey later Hey, man, in the day. a broken clock is right yeah, twice a day, brother. Right. Twice there a day, go. it's right. Take it. <laughs> Half court set now for the Yellow Jackets. Cole, Cole will handle it after the pass entry to uh, Hankerson, and they throw it away. Samaya so Abdul-Rahim going to pull it back out. Now down low to McElroy and a whistle. Cole had nothing, no choice but to foul Abdul-Rahim. Samaya so saying she was in the process of shooting. Ah, she yeah, wasn't. She was, she was trying to pass no, that no to kidding. her teammate. <laughs> really? <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a nice try, though. Yeah. I thought for a minute she was going to try to bring that basketball out, which so would have I. been a win-win situation True. either. That's that was a win-win situation. Just get it in, Brittany. Get it in and bring it, it out. Get it, bring it, bring, it it. bring it in and bring it out. Bring it in and bring it out. 27 seconds left. And a whistle. It'll be at sideline for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. 
Charles, I didn't mean to step on your shoes on there, bro, my brother. I apologize. No, man. you check. I got these new shoes for Christmas, man. It's all right. I, you did. I, I can see. handle. I can handle sure a little something. Sure, looking out for you. I see. <laughs> Zavia to inbound it out front to Brittany. That's where they want it out front there, and mm -hmm. Brittany's fouled immediately. Twenty-five hey, seconds. And Charles, they're gonna they're gonna be a side out right here. They'll commit another quick foul and bowl. And if they get it into her hands, will shoot. But on this exchange, Charles, I try to get it into Jazz Emmanuel. Why? She's your best sure. free throw shooter. And Allen is gonna commit their fifth foul right here on this inbound. McElroy fouled immediately, as you referenced by Whitfield. And so now McElroy will take her free throw present her th her free throw percent percentage to the free throw line. No, she won't walk in there. Actually what happened? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What happened, Ward? What happened? Uh, they saying McElroy committed a foul. Uh, no, Manuel committed a foul away from the basketball. Behind the arc, Whitfield fires a three. She missed there. Rebound chased down by McElroy on the other end of the floor. Yeah, that was just that quick walk. We thought we had it red down there, but they call a foul on Jasmine away from the basketball. So technically, Charles, I was wrong on that call. Tech I mean, you want to be technical with that. I jumped the gun and thought that they were going to call sure. the foul on annual, and, and they didn't. That's why you can't count your chickens before they hatch. But you had the situation spot on. That's what they were trying to do. They just caught a break away from the basketball. Mm -hmm. And as Ariel McElroy, second on this team in free throw percentage, at 71%, knocks down that first one. And the second with 12 oh. seconds left. Yeah. So Tuskegee has weathered this play of the Yellow Jackets in Chappie James. It looks like they're going to come away with their seventh win of the season as that air ball pushes out of bounds with 2.2 seconds left. Ball game, Charles. Shoot some. They won't shoot. They'll just inbound it to get things started. And Tuskegee win it, wins it 63-56 over the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. And you really have to be impressed, Dwayne, by what you've seen with the Golden Tigers. No question about it, Charles. I'm just super ecstatic for this Golden Tigers women's basketball team. As expected, late stretch, no panic, no problem. They've gone through this exercise all season long, and more times than not, they've come away with the victory. Charles, if you can go out and do it on the road in a tough environment, you most definitely can do it at home. I'm just, again, just excited for these young ladies in this performance tonight. Yeah, we talked about it with Coach Wester, how important it really was to get a good start here in this four-game homestand at Chappie James, and they've taken care of business in this first one here against the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. Tuskegee wins it 63-56. They up their mark now to 7-3, and, and more importantly, they go to 4-2 and two in conference play. They came into today's play conference-wise third in the West. Certainly can't hurt themselves after the win here over the Yellow Jackets of Allen. Allen falls to 4-6 and six and 1-4 and four in SIAC play. So first half of our doubleheader is in the books. It belongs to the Golden Tigers. Now the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee on the men's side trying to see if they can follow suit against the Yellow Jackets of Allen University. We'll have that coverage for you as our coverage continues here from Chappie James Center on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Hi, I am Lily Lanier, president of the Tuskegee National Alumni Association and you're watching the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Thank you. Hey, Tuskegee! This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon.